Ballora is one of the most well loved and mysterious characters in the Five Nights universe. For fairly obvious reasons, I mean she's a bowl of oatmeal. But who is she really and what is her attachment to the other animatronics and potentially to the Aftons? And can those attachments like swap out for other accessories or did William not think that far ahead? That's what we're exploring today. Greetings gamers and welcome back to Top 10 Gaming. I'm Connor Monroe and I know this is supposed to be Amanda but let's just chill out. This is the Top 10 Scary FNAF Ballora Theories Part 2. Let's do it. In a 10, Vanessa. We know that in the FNAF novel Novels, there's a character who ends up being revealed to be a robot, that person being the main character, Charlie, Henry's daughter, the one who gets killed by Aft and then goes on to possess the puppet. But this begs the question, since it's now established that characters can be robots without even knowing it, is there someone in the game series who could have this be the case? And some people now are thinking that it's the case with Ballora and Vanessa from Security Breach. While yes, they're both female characters, when you think about it, the two have more in common than you think. Firstly, if Vanessa is a robot, it would explain how William started controlling her through the virus, since sentient code shouldn't really be able to affect organic matter like the brain. Also in the books, Charlie's robot is also revealed to be Baby, who can shift between her forms using the pins that we see in her in the trailers, you know, like the, the, the pins that, and the blueprints. And, yeah. So the technology is there, especially when both Baby and Ballora come from the same group of animatronics. And at 9, Mother Figure. Some also believe that whether she is Vanessa or not, that she was intended to be a form of mother figure for Afton's kids once their mother left or died or whatever happened to her. Maybe she never even existed. This is based off the many arenas that Ballora basically is a mother towards, and the fact that there would be one for each Afton kid and then another spare. Now this could be William just having mommy issues, or it could be a secret fourth Afton kid like I've proposed in the past. And if that is the case, perhaps Vanessa was intended to be that kid, hence why she'd be a robot. Or Vanessa was just the human version of Ballora so the kids wouldn't freak out about having a literal robot that looked like a robot as a mom. But then again, it could just be Afton wanting to be treated like a kid and have someone to hold him and make the pain go away. That's definitely not the healthiest option, but it's something Sigmund Freud would be proud of. Also guys, if you're enjoying the video and you want to see more, be sure you hit that like button and subscribe because we put out daily FNAF content whether I want to or not. So, do it. And it ain't surrogate family. The mother figure idea could have been extended to the rest of the Funtime animatronics or those that would have been the circus babies. Because while yes the animatronics were made to grab kids and their restaurants was in essence a murder den built after his old one closed, Afton did at least make circus baby for his daughter, or at least in her image or based on what she likes. Since after all his kids was his prime demographic. It's a whole other can of worms too, I don't, let's not get into that. His, his family was based basically his focus group. And maybe that's why Ballora is so slim thick, he was talking to Mike a little too much. However, this could have been the downfall of the business, since if he did actually base some of the animatronics off his kids, that could have been their downfall. Especially because Funtime Freddy, Foxy, and Baby each represent one of his kids, with Freddy being crying child thanks to his unfortunate incident at the sister location, Foxy being Mike because, you know, Foxy bro, and Baby being Elizabeth for other obvious reasons. It could have also been William's ultimate undoing if you think about it too, because because, like, Mike, because Mike is the one who stopped him. Yeah. And at seven, lonely Afton. Or maybe this was never for his kids. After all, Afton is a man, albeit a deranged one, but even the most deranged men have needs. So maybe Ballora was a little more than a mother figure for the kids, or at least intended to be more. After all, we know she represents someone that William didn't let into his life, whether that be after his wife's exit from his life or Elizabeth's death. But even then, if we start to think about it, thanks to the fast facts found in FNAF AR, we know that the fun type animatronics were among some of the first ever animatronics Made by Afton. And if this was the case, Ballora would have been around before Elizabeth got caught by Baby, especially if she was made for circus babies. So after Afton's wife or baby mama leaves him or dies, he finds a woman who wants to help him. However, he doesn't let her into his life and instead makes a robot version that won't judge him and can probably do other things as well because let's face it, William wasn't in the brightest mindset. And if you think about it, there could be a reason Ballora is flexible. Obviously to help out with work around the house. Where's your mind at? It's gotta get that get down low to get up in the attic. You know, it's it's a small attic. You gotta gotta do like the crab walk. It's easier with an animatronic. What were you thinking, sickos? And at six, missing children. 
We also learn in the FNAF novels, along with the fact that Charlie is a robot and is also baby, that the fun time animatronics are actually possessed. But instead of them being filled with agony from specific children, they're full of the original remnant created by the first five missing children. You may think this throws a wrench into the timeline, however, they were just simply modified to contain the remnant instead of being created with it, so the timeline still holds. But does this mean that the Ballora from the games is also possessed with the agony from the five missing kids? Candy Cadet in FNAF 6 does talk about five things becoming one, and that only really makes sense with the five missing children becoming remnant to be injected into the fun times. But then that's still confusing because then like, would it exclude Baby? But it would also make sense since the robots do end up coming together in the form of Ennard to have their souls be complete. But people also think that she's possessed by Mrs. Afton, even though there is not evidence for that in the slightest. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts down below. Halfway right through in at number 5, Mrs. Emily. Even if Ballora isn't Mrs. Afton, who does she represent? Some believe that it could be Mrs. Emily, Henry's wife, the mother of Charlotte, of the puppet. Now, why would they think this? Because of William's kill list. Now, Susie may have been the first of the missing children to die, but it's still widely accepted that Charlotte is the first kill overall, which makes it the most significant. After all, killing your partner's daughter is definitely out of, out of the norm, kind of. But most murders are committed through intense emotion, with love being a very common one. So why would William kill Charlotte out of love? Because of her mother. You see, Charlotte, when she was killed, was very young, probably around three like her novel counterpart, which means that Charlotte's parents have been together for at least three years, and before that, she could have been with anyone. For example, trying to be with William in the aftermath of his wife's death. She could have met Henry this way too, and their child would be a burning reminder of what William had missed out on. Or maybe Charlotte was keeping Mrs. Emily with Henry, so William got rid of her hoping that he could be Mr. Steal Your Girl. I don't even think Scott knows at this point. Straight up. In at 4, voice line meaning. Ballora's song has always been an interesting point to talk about. With lines like, all I see is an empty room, no more joy in empty tomb, we figured out pretty quickly that William was mourning someone. However, some theorists look at the song in an entirely different way now, since after Ultimate Custom Night, we got to hear Ballora say, admit it, you wanted to let me in. And while that could remain, you wanted to let me into your life, what if it's more literal than that? What if it's actually he didn't let someone inside somewhere? Maybe whoever Ballora represents wanted to help William in his quest for answers, wanted to help him kill, and he didn't trust them enough, or maybe they were stuck outside in the cold and ended up freezing to death because William was too selfish or something. I mean, there are also signs to indicate something like that. Maybe not as extreme, but Ballora's song also says it's so good to sing all day, to dance, to spin, to fly away. And who would say that to a morning man unless they were at least as sadistic and horrifying as him? I don't know. There's also the fact that she could just be referring to Springtrap because he was stuck in the in the walls. He was hiding inside the walls when there's music in those halls. Getting close to the end in number three, Frozen Solid. Speaking of being frozen solid, could FNAF AR be giving us hints as to how Mrs. Afton or William's baby mama bit the dust, kicked the bucket, played her last song, ended the show, pushed up daisies, slept with the fishes, pegged it, the big adios, the forever neck. Because let's be honest, there has to be some reason for these godforsaken skins in the game other than to keep people playing and spending money on microtransactions, right? Okay, well maybe not, but it's fun to speculate. Ballora currently has two skins in FNAF AR, Arctic Ballora and Clockwork Ballora, obviously not including her original form, and both of these could be related to potential deaths. Clockwork is slightly more complicated, but most likely would represent dying of age, since, you know, a clock tells time. However, from what we know, William at that point wasn't really that old. So his wife or partner probably wouldn't have been that old either. So what about Arctic Blora? Well, this could mean many things, but most likely freezing. Perhaps she fell into a lake that she thought had enough ice on top of it and froze, or maybe she just got stuck in the cold. Maybe she was an adventurous person and tried climbing Mount Everest or something, or got stuck while skiing and froze. We don't know. And while it may be a little far-fetched, it's still fun to think about, since there is no evidence for what happened to William's baby mama, or even if they were married. I don't, we don't know. Penultimately, in a number two, the first. 
As I mentioned earlier, thanks to the fast facts found in FNAF AR's files, we know that the Funtime animatronics are among some of the first robots built by Afton, which means that they were built around the Springlock era. While this doesn't do much for the timeline because I mean we had already placed it around there, the question remains, who was the first out of the Funtime animatronics? And actually, some think that it's Ballora. Some think that thanks to William losing someone he loved that he made Ballora as a replacement, but then had to create the other fun times due to questions from his kids or something similar like his neighbors. Cause let's be honest, I, I know what you were thinking during number seven, all right? And that is definitely what his neighbors would have thought as well, especially his friends. So if he builds other robots in this set, it instantly makes it work and not a, uh, personal project, I guess I should say. And with Ballora being the first of them, it makes sense that she wouldn't have any of the other abilities, like a claw or a containment chamber to seal away items, since, you know, he wouldn't have thought of that at the time. He only wanted to seal one thing away. His grief. Get your mind out of the gutter. Finally, in at number one, Clara Afton. And here we go again with the good old fashioned Clara Afton. <laughs> That sounds kind of like a Wild West thing, but if it was a Wild West thing, it would be Clara Clayton. Haha! <laughs> yeah, it's for you Back to the Future fans. Quite a few people believe that Ballora is actually possessed by Mrs. Afton, even though there is no signs that indicate such. But the community doesn't really care about that. They also seem to think that this mysterious woman is also named Clara, and that's due to the wonderful world of fake TV in a fake world. The character of Clara popping up in Sister Location is certainly not something to ignore, even if it is on a fake soap opera called The Immortal and the Restless. However, the name is not confirmed. Perhaps if we knew the actor who played Clara in that show, that could make more sense, but just because a woman is talking to a guy wearing purple doesn't mean that she's Mrs. Afton, okay? If I wear purple and I talk to Amanda, does, does that mean that Mrs. Afton is now Amanda Afton? No, because my name is Connor, not William. However, the character a lot of people seem to be comparing to William, justifiably may I say, is named Vlad in the show. So why would a character who represents William be called Vlad, but the character meant to represent his wife uses her actual name? It makes no sense, okay? Until it's confirmed, I'm not calling her Clara Afton, so stop telling me to in the comments. Stop saying that's her name, okay? It's not confirmed. Knock it off. All right, good. There we have it, friends, the top 10 scary FNAF lore theories part two. I always get myself worked up at the end of these videos, so I have to call them quickly. So, thank you all so much for watching. I have been and shower me, Connor Monroe, and I'll see you in another video. <laughs> Hit subscribe.